how did that happen where you went from from one very different genre you went you went from like uh, uh horror movies to a biblical television show that is uh uplifting and 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 fun. It, ha- it happened because the showrunner the series creator the, the director dallas jenkins uh is definitely thinking outside the bottom i was supposed to pick up footage for uh, a christmas movie i was doing a i was doing uh my first christmas movie uh <laughs> it was sort of a modern day talent retelling of a christmas carol and um and the footage wasn't ready but i went to the post facility anyway uh, because um i was friends with the receptionist and uh, i was just going to visit and say hello because i got her the job there and everything and so uh it just so happened that uh dallas was in the building and he was in town looking for an editor and so the owner of the company had called me up when he was about to ask me to come in and it just so happens i was already in the building so the owner so the owner of the post facility told me about this show the chosen you know they're looking for an editor he you know and this is um, this is the first season. No one's seen yeah, this. Yeah, this is yeah. Just so like it's not a hit. I mean, point. nobody yeah, had yeah. heard it. Nobody knew anything about anything. And so, uh, so I looked up Dallas. I saw what he. I stalked him on Facebook. I saw what he looked like. I saw we had mutual friends. And he's coming up the stairs. And I said, "Hi, uh, are you Dallas Jenkins?" And he says, "Yes, I am." And I said, "Hi, I'm John Quinn." And he says, "John Quinn, John Quinn." He opens up his phone. He goes to his email, and he tells me, "Your agent submitted you for my TV show two hours ago." <laughs> he clicks on the email. He looks at my resume. At the top is "Tales from the Hood 2. and he says, "Tales from the Hood 2, huh?" And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah. What are you gonna do?" And so we go and sit down in the conference room, and we talk shop for two hours. It turns out my horror film background was a plus to him, really, because there was an exorcism scene in episode one of season one. Oh, so, interesting. Um, yeah. And if you listen to Dallas talk, uh, he, he, he said this in an interview that what he was looking for in an editor was also someone that was like a film geek, someone that was right. like a big film nerd. And horror film people tend to be big film nerd, big film geeks, and, and I was. So um, surprisingly, a show, uh, a biblical historical drama about Jesus and the disciples my horror film background wasn't a negative thing. Um, I think it would be for a lot of people, uh, but you know, that we're, would be making this type of show, but it wasn't for him. And I'm, I'm very thankful that it wasn't because, because I've, I've been, tur- I've, I have been turned down for work because they look at my reel, they look at my credits and it's like, Oh, he's a horror film guy. He can't possibly do this comedy series, you know, cutting comedy, I, you know, so much of it is just about timing and not ruining the joke. And so much of cutting horror is about timing and not ruining the suspense. And it's about feeling it, you know, for the most part with comedy, as far as I'm concerned, you either, either you have a performance and a moment happen that is funny or you don't. There's no, I, I just feel like if it's funny, the you, editing, you just got to stay out of the way and make mm-hmm. sure that you don't ruin the timing. You know, because usually something is funny because nobody's expecting it. And at the same time with horror, something is scary sometimes, like jump scares, because you're not expecting it. So in a way, you want to find that thing that's funny, that's going to you think that is funny and try and not ruin it. And, and a lot of it has to do with the lead up. What is how does that affect you as uh, as an editor, whether you have access to the writer or, or not? interesting uh, i never i never have access to the oh you never <laughs> like <laughs> not even no. like a writer director or a writer producer like oh the, if, it's the a, ch- if it's a writer director of course and obviously i'm talking to the writer does, if it's the director but basically i only talk to the director i rarely ever talk to the writer does it feel different when you're talking to a writer director versus just a guy who's just a director no it doesn't because it's the 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 by that point i feel like the director has made it their own you know oh, okay. it's, it is their vision even if they weren't the writer um the uh, on the chosen uh the the head writer uh what we were doing on season two is me and the showrunner dallas we would get the show to you know basically dallas's liking but then we would do one more pass and we bring in the head writer and just to just to just get his feedback you know and and see if he sends up a red flag of something doesn't seem to work so i would say on the chosen it's one of the only times that i've I've had interaction with the writer. But yeah, the the, the, the writer, still... the writers Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. For the <laughs> no. 
Um, but uh, so so um, uh, uh, one more question about like your, your actual like um, uh, creative process. One of the uh, trickier parts of editing, I think for everybody, but especially people that are like starting out is um, a dialogue scene. It, it seems like everybody's natural instinct is to just this person's talking so the camera should be on them and then this person's talking so the camera should be on them but um it it, it a more sophisticated editor obviously starts doing things where the dialogue starts before the cut or the dialogue continues after the cut which if, uh, for our viewers if you haven't uh, heard the terms they're called j and l cuts because of the the way it looks on a timeline it looks like a capital j or a capital l um how do you approach that uh as a as an editor is that something? Is that is that something you're doing like from the from the from the get go when you were talking about just laying all the scenes out, or is that something you do as you're refining it, or how do you get into that um, creatively? Yeah. So uh, for the most part, the way I used to do dialogue scenes is, and this I I got this from uh, another editor like 20 years ago when I was like a post PA. This editor said that the way they do dialogue scenes is, and this is how I decide who I'm going to be on. Uh, basically, um, you have a scene between two or three people and they're talking. Imagine that you're in the room watching people talk, okay, having this dialogue. When you are in a situation in real life where you're watching people talk, you're not always looking at the person that's talking. Many times you're looking at the person that's listening. And so that's kind of how I judge who I'm going to be on and when I'm going to be on them and when I'm going to be off them. Basically, I will choose the best performance for each line or line run. And then I go and figure out who I'm going to be on. Who would I be looking at? So so the dialogue comes first and then the, the picture comes second if it's a dialogue scene. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so um, the chosen is basically nothing but dialogue. It's nothing right. but people talking. And so uh, we, have a, we have a setup where it's a lot of work, but I'm telling you... Um, it's, it's been so valuable. Uh, it's very time consuming for our assistant editor. So what we have our assistant editor do is uh, a line by line, or some people call it a string out or a dialogue string out. So um, basically what happens is if you have a dialogue between two people, uh, say it's Matt and John, and Matt says, hey, John, how are you doing? The assistant editor will take every angle of every take and you'll see Matt say, 10, 20 times. Hey, John, how you doing? Hey, John, how you doing? Hey, John, you know. So the wide, the two shot, the close up, yeah. all in a Wow. Yeah. And, right? And so, and then it'll be the next line, uh, next set of lines. If John says, oh man, I'm doing okay, uh, but I'm pretty tired. I'm going to go home now. It's going to be every take of John from of every angle saying, no, I'm feeling okay, but I think I'm going to, I'm kind of tired. I'm going to go home now. I think I'm okay. Right? Um, and there's a little space and there's a marker that tells you what the line is so that when you go looking for it, if you need to go looking for it later on. Um, and so the way I did the first couple of seasons of The Chosen was basically I would just go with whatever the best performance is for each beat, for each run of lines. Um, some For me in the beginning, that was more important than the angle. You know, whatever's the best performance. If the, if the best performance happens to be in the wide, then I go with the wide. If it happens to be in the close up, I go with the close up. I just go with whatever was the best performance. Wow, um, and so the reason this was va very valuable uh, later is that Dallas many times would just want to see other line readings. And, oh. and so instead of me, so if I'm in a remote session or if, if I'm in person with my director, if he wants, to, he or she wants to see a bunch of line readings, if I have this line reading, uh, timeline, I can just, within 45 seconds, I can find it. Reveal bin, go to the string out, boom, 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 boom. There's the line. Here they all are. What's your favorite? You know, sometimes, and sometimes the video might be good, but the audio of the performance sucks. So once again, you go to the line by line and you can just, we'll just listen to what's the best reading of that line. And then just take that audio and put it into the actor's mouth uh, on, on the video. That looks good. That's that's amazing. I've never even heard of that. That's that's a so your your poor assistant editor has to do this before you even show up for work. Is is your assistant editor are they working overnight? How do, how how is that? Um. So uh, on the chosen, basically, uh, you know, like day one, uh, they say they they show they film on day one on a Monday. Day two uh, on 
on day two, on Tuesday, uh, my assistant editor gets that day one footage on Tuesday and they have that whole day to organize it to my liking and do the line by lines. Uh, oh, I see. Everything. So you're, and so then on Wednesday morning, it's all ready for me to go. It's so you're, go. you finish day one's editing when they are finished shooting day three, essentially. Yeah. Yeah.